Well, good morning from uh, my studio to yours. Um, you can see uh, little Bertie in the background sitting there. Uh, he crosses his legs, thinks he's just wonderful. Charlie's tucked up in his other bed. Um, it's been a crazy week and um, I haven't had time to to do anything for YouTube. So, um, But I promised that I would do share how I do the drawings uh, on... Um, on the fabric and um, I'm going to start that right now might even have time to show you some of the quilting but basically I'm going to draw on white fabric and uh, create my own illustration my own fabric my own applique and um, I'll show you a few other samples as well and um, hope you enjoy it I'm using two different sorts of pens. Sometimes I use um, little pots of pigment ink like this, like this one, and um, it just depends. And I've got to fill it all what I've got left. These are Fabrico pens um, from Sukaneko, and they have um, a brush one end and a point the other end and I've used these for years and years and years and years a little bit harder to find and um, now I use mainly I use Faber Castell um, you know I buy them <laughs> by the hundreds <laughs> and um, they're smaller and finer and of course the ink doesn't last as long but I can get over a hundred colors there so um, I'm going to use a combination of both because those are the colors that I have at the moment. This is actually um, a block of the month that I'm doing and look I started a while ago and uh, I had to stop because I was traveling so um, I want to finish it uh, within the next, we'll finish the top at least uh, in the next couple of weeks. This is part of the pattern here um, and um, I actually have, have to do this little guy here and uh, I actually did it before, but I, I took it off the quilt, original quilt, to put it onto something else. So obviously I'm using a light box and I'm using white fabric. And I like to have fabric that is very tight weave. This fabric I'm using is called Japara. Japara is fabric that they actually make the um, covers for feather quilts so that the feathers won't go through. We use it here in Australia to line jackets, so waterproof jackets to be honest. So um, I'm using um, a 0.5 pigment ink pen and uh, it's a uni pen. I'll show it in detail later. The reason I use this instead of um, some of the other markers is because this has a rounded edge and it makes it so much easier For drawing. It's a pigment ink pen and um, doesn't matter if I go outside the lines a little bit. It's my drawing to be honest. These are crazy little birds uh, and as I mentioned in the last video I um, did all of this, did all these drawings Got a little wrinkle in there. I did all these drawings when I was in the hairdressers. So I'm just outlining this little bird. Um, I'm not going to do the legs, but simply because um, when I put it on the quilt, I'll just draw the legs in and they will be embroidered either by machine or by hand. I'm not quite sure yet. I do both. And as you can see, this pen, let me turn that off. Oh, this pen is like drawing on paper. Oops, there's a little, let's do this a bit here. There we are. I think that looks okay. 
So I've let the ink dry. It takes about five minutes, or you can put it um, put it uh, on the iron under the iron. Um, but I'm going to. So you can see how I'm holding my hand, so I hold it tight. And what I like is to have it so I can't see that it looks like a colouring in. Now I can go outside the lines, which is beneficial because um, I'm going to cut on that line to cut out the applique. By holding the brush on the side, um, it covers the area quicker. It's bled a little bit here, but to me, at the moment, it doesn't matter simply because I'm going to shade it anyway. So now I've filled this one, and you can see it's bled a little bit there, but I'm going to shade this on the edge. Um, it's like an old fashioned drawing, and I it's a bit hard to explain until I show you exactly what I'm going to do with it. And yes, I can go outside the lines. Of course, I can't go outside these lines. Now, I wouldn't put a colour here yet until this is dry. I'm going to go and put this on the iron and the colour will go a, a few shades lighter. But you can see that I've filled it completely. And by that, I mean, I want it a block colour. I don't want it to look like that, like a drawing. I want it to look like that. And I'm, I'm doing it on the side, as you can see. I pressed it and you can see that it's, it's a little faded or you may not be able to see it, but I know, certainly notice it. But you can see that it's, it's filled in very nicely. I haven't got any white areas in between the strokes. Now, because it's completely dry, um, I can actually do this next piece here. Quite often I would do this piece here and wait till that dries and then do this piece. So, but you can tell that it's ink. You can tell that it's dye because it goes all the way through and it's not sitting on the surface. And one of the things that I do do is I put a piece of paper on my desk. Number one, I don't want it to go through onto my desk, but number two, it gives me a better finish because my desk is a little bumpy. Um, if you want to, to hold, sometimes I put the cutting mat underneath there and it, it, it holds it. And uh, before I go on any further, this is another one. This is one that I've done long time ago. This is a fairy for another block of the month. And this is all drawn um, exactly the same way. And uh, I think you can see, see the shading here. So that's what I'm going to do to make this other piece um, um, stand out. So you can see that this looks like Mm, it's an old-fashioned illustration, isn't it, basically? Yes, it's 100% pigment ink. So now I've actually coloured most of it in and I've pressed it. You can go back, go back over and colour again if you want to make it a little bit darker. You see, if I want that colour to be darker, I will go back over it. And I'm happy, I'm really happy with that, that's fine. Um, but the other thing that's exciting about this is the way that I antique it in a way. So I create the sketch. Now I'm using my um, um, Unipin pen. And, um, oh, you can't see it, there you go, Unipin pen. And I'm going to make it... Um, antique. So I'm going to very, very gently come right up to the edge and I add shading right here, right on the very edge of the picture. Can you see that? Sometimes it's, you know, it's just little squirrels, little tiny squirrels. And um, when I get to the edge here, make it a little darker. 
and then a few little dots out here. Now around the eye, I'll just still do the same. be careful here because this is where that, that beak is wet. Now these pens I use for all my drawings and um, as I said they have a rounded edge so they make it much easier for drawing on. Now if I was using ordinary paint um, somehow I don't think I could do this but because this is ink I can just do layer upon layer. They are translucent because it is ink it's a dye so if I have to use a white, I actually have to use one that has a little paint in it because you can't have a white pen in pigment ink. So you can buy some, you can buy the white pens uh, from, it look like, uh, you know, the white out ones. So you can see, it's like little cobwebs. On the yellow, it always stands out a lot more, so I'm very careful. I just mainly just do the dots, otherwise it gets a, a bit heavier and on, on here. But I want to show you how I'll do the tail. So we would have it darker here at the tail, at the feather, I mean, so at the join here. So I'm going to make it more defined by adding darker colour or heavier colour here. It just little cobwebby, cobweb thingies. You'll be so surprised when you see it cut out, it looks amazing. I mean, this one, I haven't added, it, added any, um, anything extra onto it. Let me do this little one here. See how it gives it definition there. I could do more definition here, but I don't want to do too much. There we go. I've added a bit more black. Yeah. It doesn't take very long. It's a little tedious, I will admit. Sometimes, you know, when I'm doing really big ones. But this is because... I stole them to put on another project that I was doing. It's actually a portrait. And I use these around the edge because these come from my imagination. It was a portrait of me. And you wonder why I do this illustration number one it's I think it's quirky but other than that if I had a plain applique it would look just like that now this is dimensional it looks three-dimensional it gives it much more interest and much, much more interest to the viewer and you can see that um, this part compared to this is so different Yellow is the hardest to do. And I'm just, look, I describe to my students, I'm kissing the fabric. It's, the, the, the pen is so light on there. And it's just little squiggles, a little bit. And sometimes I go darker into the edge. Can you see what happens when I go darker into the edge here? Very lightly, just going over it um, a little bit more.
So pretty much this is the um, applique drawing finished. And this is my own fabric. Nobody, it's not a pattern. It's not um, a commercial pattern, of course, um, pattern fabric, although I am doing it, I can, and I can do it on commercial fabric, and I do do it on commercial fabric at times. Sometimes I have to, when I'm doing uh, something like this lady here, when I'm doing her, for instance, if we look at this band here she has, so I can't, I can't buy a piece of fabric like that, so I have to draw it, or um, this fabric here, this colour here, or the legs. So I do draw a lot of my own fabrics for the whimsical drawings. I think that's about it. I've put some steamer seam light on the back of the picture. Uh, and what any fusible will do, I prefer steamer seam light. And now I'm going to cut it. Now these scissors are my dream scissors and they're not actually for crafting, they're for um, florist work and you can buy them in the floristry department of your uh, hardware store. Um, I actually did buy it in a, them in a craft store once, um, but um, then they stopped selling their friskers, friskers. And I like them simply because they have um, they have a very sharp scissors, and um, I can manipulate them. I'm been doing an applique quilt which is 236 foot long. And some of those pieces are less than an eighth of an inch wide. And I've had to, I've, I've, I've <laughs> sourced a lot of scissors and um, these are the best. So, particularly because you know, they've, when you're cutting out a lot and you've, you've got sore hands like I used to have, I don't have any more. Now, I don't leave any white. There's absolutely no white, and that's why I've gone over the edge because I'm cutting through paint or through ink, not paint, guys. You know when you do an applique and you're doing it on commercial fabric and you, you cut it out and you have that white halo because some of the back shows through? We don't have this that with this technique simply because it's um, the colour goes all the way through the um, fabric. little piece of fabric and I think it looks okay so now I'm going to put this down onto the piece that I stole it from originally and um, I'm taking the fusible off the back so we're just left with the glue side here and you can see I already have oopsie I already have the legs there, still there. There we go. It's hard to, to get sometimes to get the paper off this. When I said that I was doing that quilt for the as 236 foot long, I'm recreating the Bayer tapestry, it's nearly finished. And um, I would come and do the applique um, one morning, one day. I used to get up at four o'clock and do um, do it till ten o'clock in the morning. And um, but I would prepare the applique and then leave it in a plastic bag 
um, for 48 hours or 24 hours, something like that. And then when I went to, to take the backing off, I could just go like that and it would come off. So... You can see that I can draw also onto this fabric. You can see that I've drawn here. Here is going to be a little doodle lackey because somehow a mark got on there. Oh, I think it has to go around there, doesn't it? Yes. There we go. Now, that's just stuck on there. It's just sitting there. And none of these are stuck down because I stole them before. So that stays there until I'm ready to um, iron it down. And I won't iron it down until I'm absolutely um, happy with the whole thing. Um, on the back of this, to do the applique, I have something called Quilt Light. It's really, really soft. You can see that it's um, it's like a very fine flannel. And I'm going to do the applique stitch um, over this. Because I have done this shading on here, I can use a grey um, invisible thread which is what I'm doing. So you can barely see um, that the applique has been done. I do a tiny little zigzag, but um, I can show you that later. So let's do... Um, there we go. Now all of these will be hand embroidered um, and there's lots of things on here. This one little one is... I've drawn little birds on the tree. And you can see that um, I've added other colours. But can you see the dimension that I have? It's it's like, it's as I said, 3D. So this was orange with pink, um, red with green, and pink with blackbirds on. There's no, it's, the sky's the limit. There's absolutely no limit to what you can do. One of the other things I've been doing this week is um, photographing. Uh, all the garments that we had made in India, and they'll soon be up uh, on the web page. It takes ages to do all that sort of thing, you know, and so I have to uh, check everything and uh, press them and photograph them, and then we're getting them up on the web page. And it's new for us, so um, yeah, but it's pretty exciting. The jackets are gorgeous, they're um, canther jackets, and it's old vintage canther. And I've chosen the very best that I can. I mean, I look through hundreds. Some of them we've had embroidered with Suzani embroidery. And they're so comfortable. It's like wearing a hug. Um, so <laughs> that's been really hectic this week, but it's almost done.